regardless of age, yes. Pa parents are more than welcome. Can someone use my phone or Meg's phone for photos? So how have you been doing? Been good. Good, good. Yeah, good. How's the 2200 construction going? I have I had two people pull into my yard saying, we're trying to find Divine Acres. And they told us this way. I go, well, this is my house. <laughs> get here can always ask him about hiding after communion or just before or yeah right at, after communion Joe or Hector, um, I'm going to want a photo, everyone. We can do it right after the service. Oh, after the service? Okay. Okay. While they're waiting for the... Yeah, as many adults that want to hide eggs. <laughs> What's that? No, they need to be visited. Where are they? In my office. No, they're right there. You saw the look. Thank you all. Afterwards, we're going to take a photo.
you have the gospel book? This is the only one that's on, so if you want, I can do that. Won't be as cold. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Yeah. Happy Easter, everyone. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 207. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. I'd like to welcome everyone that is joining us here in person and those that are watching online. If you are watching online, please share what state or country you're watching from, and we will share that during announcements. Our service begins on page 355. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us sing a song of praise.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may overmore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace of Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God had anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went out <clears throat> about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God as with him. We are the witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. In your bulletin, you'll find portions of Psalm 118 we will say them responsibly by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and is marvelous in your eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. He will rejoice and be glad in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, and which you also stand, 
through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there with a cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, as for yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels standing in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. Then said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom you are looking for? Suppose him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have taken him, carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. (laughs) 
If it seems a little chilly in here this morning, it was uh, pretty humid, so we thought maybe the air conditioners could take care of the, the, um, the humidity. So. Alleluia, 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 Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Today, alleluia. <laughs> we celebrate that the greatest day in the history of the world Today we celebrate the great truth of Jesus Christ who was crucified on a Roman cross and died. And then he rose from the dead just three days later. In our gospel reading, Mary didn't recognize Christ when she saw him. And he was different in some ways than the Jesus that she had known. Think about today. How often do we see someone but really don't see them who might be alone or maybe in need of help? Do you not recognize me? As you do the least of these to my brethren, you do it to me. This reminds me of St. Francis of Assisi, and he was terrified of leprosy. One day, it was, he was saw uh, in the bright sunshine, a leper. And he greatly feared contamination of that disease. Ashamed, he found his courage, ran and threw his arms around the leper and kissed him and walked on. Now he looked back, but there wasn't anyone there. He realized it wasn't a leper, but it was Jesus. Think about all those who have lost loved ones. Because when we're faced with death, we should look to the Lord and not to the tomb. The tomb is a place of death, but the Savior is life. Jesus commands Mary to go and tell, to share the good news. And Jesus wants everyone to know the good news. He is risen and death has been conquered. His resurrection, the conquering of death, isn't just for Jesus, but for everyone who accepts and proclaims Jesus as their Savior and Lord. He is risen. So Mary goes and tells, and those in turn who heard go and tell, and those that share the good news with go and tell. This is how the message of Jesus Christ's resurrection is passed down throughout the ages, through the generations to us today. And we've been given that could dematerialize a body. We have Jesus' body leaving the tomb, the tomb and the shroud linen wrappings just laying there as if he was dematerialized and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen, but rolled up in a place by itself. Now, if Jesus' body was carried away from the tomb, the grave clothes would either be taken away with the body or scattered on the floor. The material body was transformed into a spiritual body. Isaiah's shroud... The sheet enclosing the dead body is now symbolized in our Episcopal Church as the fair linen, the white tablecloth that we spread on the altar. So we have our altar linens here, but here is our fair linen. Jesus said to Mary, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. And this can be a lesson for all of us, because when we lose someone, whatever obstacles are in our life, we must move forward. However, this can be very hard for us to do. The it's almost looking at for those people that can't move on is seeing and perceiving a world that makes us think that sin and death are in charge. And that in turn tricks us into wanting to go back 
to the past when things were better. Unfortunately, that really kind of binds us in sadness and we begin to take everything personally. Mary was so caught up in her grief, and we can understand it, Jesus died. So she was in a, a blaming mode. Who took his body? She was paralyzed and stuck. She couldn't get up and leave like Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved. She didn't allow herself to wonder about why the linen cloths were just lying there in the tomb. Mary was so trapped by her grief that she couldn't see the angels in front of her. Mary couldn't even recognize the resurrected Christ in her presence. So what has happened has happened. We can't change the past, but we must live in the present. We can't let the past define us. We have to have, live for today and a future that we live in Christ's glory. The Easter resurrection is the way. It overtakes our lives and redeems our lives. It's a way of looking away from ourselves and all of our problems that we take into the beauty of nature or even a smile. It might take a while for us to see as God sees, to love as God loves. Remember reading in Mark where Jesus spits into his hands and smears it on the blind person's eyes. At first, the people looked like trees. So Jesus laid his hands on him again, and then his sight was clear. Now, it might take a little while, but understand that God is at work in our lives, meeting us where we are, holding us, healing us, and indeed the whole of creation, so we can see through resurrection eyes. God gives us a vision, and he reveals to us why we do what we do. He gives us a purpose even in our pain. Doing what God requires of us can be difficult, and for some, it means becoming humbler, becoming uh, maybe because they're too proud. For others, it means going and helping the needy. And we also must remember that what we think is right may not be what God considers to be right. In the Wall Street Journal, Talal Ansari wrote about actor Jeremy Renner in his first interview since the snowplow incident. And he said he would risk getting run over by a snowplow again to save his nephew. Renner said, I do it again because it was going to it was going right towards my nephew. The accident happened near Renner's Nevada home. Heavy snow had fallen and his vehicle driven by a family member got stuck. So Renner went to get into his snowplow, which weighs about 14,000 pounds, to help move the vehicle. Now, as he was speaking with a family member, the snowplow began to roll, and he attempted to get back inside, but he was run over. The 52-year-old actor broke over 30 bones and required numerous surgeries. Renner said he thought he might die. He told Diane Sawyer, I'm thinking like, what's my body look like? Am I just going to be like a spine and a brain, like in a science experiment? Renner's neighbor, who made the 911 call, said, It was blood, the amount of blood, and then he was, he was in such pain. Then I, when I looked at his head, it appeared to be cracked wide open. Renner had broken bones spanning the entire length of his body, including both his ankles, some of his ribs, his right shoulder, his eye socket, and jaw. He also suffered a collapsed lung. At one point in the televised interview, Renner started crying and said, what we just endured, that's real love. It's suffering, but that feeds the seed of what love 
is. We must listen to our calling. We mustn't be afraid that God calls us to do something great, and we must not be ashamed if he calls us to do something small. We're still commanded to come and see, to go and tell. The world needs to hear from a people who've been to the tomb and know that Jesus is alive. The world needs to hear of a Savior we serve. On this Easter morning, let us proclaim to the world, Alleluia, 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 Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. People are form three on page 387. As you are able. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we, that all, we all may, be, may one. be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth and give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. And give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray now for our own needs and for those of others. We pray for the unity of the Anglican Communion and the Episcopal Church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in the province of the West Indies. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for St. Andrew's Corpus Christi and Santa Fe Church, San Antonio. 
We lift up our presiding Bishop Michael, our Bishop David, and our priest Dexter, as well as diocesan seminarians. We pray for our President Joe, our Governor Greg. We especially pray for strength and healing for Joanne, Rob, Roberta, O.T., Allison, Cherie, Mike, Hector, Angelique, Lacey, Brooke, Amanda, Steve, Linda, the Walters family, Doc, and Juan. We pray for those in our families who have died. We pray for Haley on our military prayer list, and we pray for persecuted Christians everywhere, as well as for our outreach ministries, the Divine Food Pantry, Plaza de Paz, Military Ministry, Mission Divine, and World Missions. Let's take a moment you can add your own prayers and intercessions. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Page 360. On page 360. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace to the Lord. Peace be with you. Javier, peace to the Lord. Um, yeah, it would be good to move it now. Yeah, a little bit towards, because they're going to be standing here. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Peace of the Lord. Glorious day. Yes. Yeah, my son set the alarm so he could get up and take a and see the sunrise. And <laughs> Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord, John. Hi, sweetie. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Hector, peace of the Lord. Hi, Ali. Peace of the Lord. Allison, peace of the Lord. Robert, peace of the Lord. It's so nice to see you. Joe, peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. I'm so glad you could be here. Peace of the Lord. Peace to be with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Imagine if we had this every Sunday. <laughs> Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Peace 
Allison, peace to the Lord. Okay. Harry would love it. Peace of the Lord. You're continually in my prayers. Oh, thank you. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone that is joining us on this glorious Easter morning. Um, and let's see, if you could just hold this, Karen, while I talk. Okay. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone that is here in person, but also people that are watching online, not only right now, but in a couple hours this evening and tomorrow. We do have, um, we have Steve and Stacy. Uh, and Amber in Greenville. We have Pat in New York. We have Marge in Rhode Island. We have Tanya and Julian in Germany. We have, um, and Haley in DC. So all of you that are welcome, I'm so glad that you're able to share with us this morning. Um, one of the things I wanna uh, talk about, we have these cool, things in. Because Meg made them, I'm going to let her explain what these are. They're prayer hearts, and you put your, there's a little pocket that you can write down prayers, and you can keep it by your bed or have it in the morning with your coffee, put it on the table. If you're anxious about something before you go to bed, you can write it down and put it in there and give it to the Lord. So um, they're just for you to use as you would like. Um, so he's going to bless them, and then everybody should be able to get one. Every person should be able to have one. Okay. So I'd like to offer a blessing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings of this life and for those that follow your word and for those that have the talents to make something like these prayer hearts. We ask the Holy Spirit be filled with grace and love for those that use them and put their notes inside them to be closer to you in their prayers and in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, let's see. We have, right after the service, we're going to move the cross back up. And the kids, if you would kind of be round by the, the, the flower cross, then we can take a photo. Uh, this coming... Is it Saturday, Meg? Uh, this Saturday we have Natalia Blue Bonnet Parade. And uh, we got John's truck, and we've got, we'll have hay bales in the back. Karen, Joe, Javier, Cherie, I think, all stuffed like hundreds of these white bags are going to be thrown out at the parade. So, and you know, other kids will go for the candies, but when they see one of those white bags that are filled with all kinds of goodies with crosses and bracelets, you name it, they, they run down the trucks. So, oh, and candy will be also inside. So I can't forget about the candy. Uh, let's see, on the, in two weeks, no, on Monday, not tomorrow, but a week from Monday, we are having is the solar eclipse. 
I do know in the town of Divine, they're having all kinds of, uh, at the Warhorse Stadium, uh, all kinds of activities and things, but we're also gonna be doing one here at the church, will be a lot less crowded. We have 110 solar glasses, so if you would uh, like to come here, we've ordered one of those industrial popcorn machines. I think that was, I don't know whose idea that was, but. Okay, Karen's idea. What time? Uh, what's that? What time? Okay, so it's going to be 11 to 2. The one thirty is when it's going to be totality for a minute, 33 seconds where we are. So, but you're welcome. We're going to have, uh, Allison suggests we're going to be having the Frito pie, and we'll have lemonade and uh, water and all kinds of good things. Okay, so that will be, so Saturday parade, Monday eclipse, um, after the service today, after we take a photo with the cross, we're going to hold the, the kids back a little bit, and then we'll release them. And out here between the buildings will be like 250 plus eggs that just for the kids. And we have baskets for everybody. Uh, we do have our newslet newsletter. Uh, it's in the back. If you want a hard copy, I also send it out through email. Uh, and then we do have all kinds of goodies in the back, like the empty tomb which is the crescent roll and the marshmallow and there's strawberry things and there's fruit and vegetables and all kinds of stuff. So uh, be welcome to share that. I think that's all the announcements. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave of himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 199.
Our service continues on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death we, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, whoever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power and might, Christ, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink in new and undending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God take their remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Christ bless you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you 
with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 210. peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. If I could get the kids to come up front, we'd like to take a photo with a cross. Only if you want to.